first, uh, Dr. Wiest, welcome to this series. Uh, we who are working on this project are, are so glad that you've agreed to be interviewed. And uh, I'm particularly honored uh, because to interview you because um, there's really too much to say about you in an, inter in a, in a, in a introduction. But many people lately have said that John Paul Wiest is one of the modern founders of the study of Christianity in China. You've published too many works to mention. Uh, certainly you've published a, a great deal of articles and book reviews, uh, book chapters, edited volumes, a monograph, uh, just so much. But people, when, we, when, we've, when we've mentioned or discussed your work, people mention almost more than any other work, your book on the, the history of the Mary Knowles in China, because maybe it's just the most, the most accessible book. You also uh, co-edited a volume with Edmund Tang on the, uh, the Catholic Church in modern China. You've written on the Jesuits, both in the early era and uh, the Jesuits during the Boxer Uprising, uh, who were in what used to be called Zhili. Uh, you've even written a book on a popular Catholic cemetery on the, the Shibei, the Stele, on Zhengfu Cemetery, which uh, I'm honored to have and have looked at quite a lot myself. But the goal here is to let you do the speaking. So uh, let's just begin with the first question. And that is, if, if, you could tell, if you could tell us what brought you to the field uh, of Christianity and China studies, and not only what brought you to the field, but why were you particularly interested in the topics that you have focused on? Uh, well, that goes back to my own uh, upbringing. You know, I'm French born, but from a region that is border with Germany. So in my family, people spoke both language. And so to be in another type of culture, not understanding exactly the language, never bother me. On the contrary, it attracted me. And so when I grew up later on and um, read for the first time the life of Father Vincent Lem, I thought, this is a great guy. He was a Belgian, spoke French, spoke some Dutch language, and then went to China and learned the language so well, adapted so well into it, and became even a Chinese citizen. I said, that's the type of person I want to be. And so that's what attracted me to China. And I went to Taiwan and later on in, in China itself and tried to be as possible, not another lab, I cannot, I would never be but to be so close as possible to the Chinese, to almost become a Chinese myself. And um, so that's how I came into the field. Uh, in order to understand better the field, I had to do some, some study and by one way or the other, I came to the US, uh, had a PhD in Chinese history and that's where I, started to focus on not so much on the missionary themselves, but on the people that receive, receive the language. And that's where I started to understand the meaning of uh, all history, letting the people talk themselves. And so my first study, uh, PhD was on, on Guangdong, on the missionary work in Guangdong, and I couldn't go and do all history at that time. We're talking into the 60s days. But I was able to, to find the book of Loné on Mission de, on the Mission de Guangdong, and I found out that the book was made by the missionary themselves that had interviewed the Chinese Christians. And so that, that really what gave me that idea that in order to do Christian studies and so on, you have to let the people themselves talk. 
and say how they received the faith, how they saw the missionaries and so on. And that's how I, get, I got into the field. And Mary Noel later on gave me that opportunity and, and, and so on. And then I became some kind of quote unquote expert on all history in the Christian setting. Would that answer the first question? Or? So, but then what then, I know you've written on so much, uh, what then attracted you specifically to Mary Knowles? Was it just that you somehow were given that position at Mary Knowles in the archives? What inspired you to write about the specific topics that you've written about? Well, it's, it's Mary Knowles came to find me uh, somehow they were starting a, a project on uh, researching, writing their history when they were in China. And I had written that book on the Paris foreign missionary in South China. And basically, Mary No got their territory from the Paris for their mission territory from the Paris for mission. So I had all the background. I knew everything up until the Paris, uh, up until Mary No arrived. So they, 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 they found me, and uh, I said, "Well, of course, I'm very interested." And and so they helped me in, in, in a way to get even deeper into the research of uh, Christianity in China. And it was just at the time when <laughs> I, I was looking for a job and, and I had, nothing was, was coming. So, so, so it's a blessing in a way that Mary no find me and I was able to work with Mary no for almost 19 years. Well, you know, we all know that you've done a, a lot of research in archives, uh, research in archives, not only here in the United States at Mary Knoll, which has a marvelous archive. You've also worked well in Vanv, uh, and, 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 and archives everywhere, the, the, the Samist archive. Uh, you've worked a lot in China. But I wonder, people want to know then, if you've ever had a discovery in an archive or some discovery while you were conducting your research that changed how you think about Christianity in China? Um, I, I, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, what, what, what I can say is that as, as I was researching uh, in the the archives of the Paris foreign missionary at the Rue du Bac. That's where I discovered for the first time that book of um, Launay on Mission du Guangdong and Mission du Guangxi. And at the same time, I saw a lot of the letters and so on. And it, it dawned on me that yeah, what the missionary I'm do, uh, saying is interesting, but it's very, in a sense, is different from what you see in the letter and what is published about this letter to make the thing beautiful and so on. What the missionary are talking about are some of the problems they encounter and and talk about what such and such Christian was saying and so on. So that, that's again, that's what said, well, if I do Christian study, I have to talk to the people themselves. Meaning the people that are quote unquote being evangelized and uh, later on in my, in my feeling, in my uh, dealing with those people, I found myself more being evangelized by them than <laughs> evangelizing them. Right, right. Uh, you're not so, the first so, scholar so, to mention that. Yeah, so again, that's uh, go back to the question of um, uh, listening to the people and the question of the importance of all history. Mm -hmm. Well, on that topic of your time in China, has there were there was there an experience or even more than one experience that you have had in china that was that was particularly meaningful to you 
I know I've heard personally some of your stories from your experiences in China, but could you share with us one or two experiences that you've had in China that were particularly meaningful? Oh, there are so many. Because my idea was to go to the field to find the people and so on. Uh, one will be the first time I was giving the chance to go to Zhujiahe, that uh, village of, in Zhili Shandong border, where the whole church was burned and so on. And to be on that ground with nothing, talking with the Christians of the place, when they show me the well where the boxers throw down the young virgin, those young girls of 16, 17 years old. Ah, and then looking at the little chapel they are built, where they show me some of the remnants of the of the rosaries and things, uh, bones and so on, they had collected and they were preserving them. Uh, that makes so much sense. Uh, hearing them still talking about uh, Mrs. Jew, the, the wife of the head catechist that had st still stood in front of Manger to try to protect him and was hacked to death. All that was very, very, very moving, moving experience. Uh, another experience will be, if I can put another, going to Xia uh, Hansun. That's just, uh, I think now it's part of uh, Tianjin Diocese, but it was part of Beijing. And that's where one of Father Lev's first village was he was there when he arrived in 19, 1901 and where he heard about uh, the story of, of people were killed and so on and then as he was there when the young boxer he was from the village he was from that village came back to ask forgiveness in front of the whole village for what he had done. And, and that, uh, that's, that is all in lab uh, letters and so on. But being to that place and seeing that place was such a moving experience. And, and by the way, that was to, uh, put into a, a play by Henri Guéon, French play. And, and before I knew everything, I had a chance to be, to be part of that play. We, we, we played in our high school. And, 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 and so being, going to Chia Hanson and that flashback when I was a young boy uh, in, in that play, it's, you know, it's, it, it's such amazing, touching, almost spiritual experience. Do you remember what role in Henri Guéron's play, what role did you play? Do you remember? Well, I, yes, but I, I, I play, it, 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 that play was written almost like a, a, a Chinese play. I was uh, on two sides of the, 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 not the screen, uh, you play the, the stage, right. the stage, you had, two scholars that as the play was going, uh, kind of uh, telling for the audience what was going on and so on and so on. So I was one of those young scholars on the play, but I still remember my friend, that, the one that played lab, that one that played the young scholars and so on. And, uh, with one of them at least, two, two of them, two of them, I have, we have remained very, very good friends. Um, I'm, I'm mindful of a saying in the Luyu, in the And one of them, one of them even sent me a picture that he had kept. Oh. 
when we play that thing. Are you in the picture? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and I'm mindful, I was just about to say, uh, of a saying in the Analects, in your mind, do not go astray. And I yeah. tried to stay on the, the same questions, but I can't help but ask a question not on the list. You know, you, uh, like, like me, um, you uh, respect Father Leb for his example. Uh, I have a photograph of Father Leb near my, me when I work. Um, I've always wanted to ask if you have met people who knew Father Leb. Yes. And what did they say? They think he's a saint. He's a saint. Um, and this is, Father Leb was, had become Chinese, completely Chinese. And uh, his idea was... Um, well, you know, evangelization in the spirit of that time, you know, you have to convert and so on. But um, he, he was, uh, he had become fully a Chinese citizen. And, uh, you know, one of his main motives was, let's save the country. Mm -hmm. And he, at the same time, then, you know, he was linking that to the gospel, the joke wall. Then he also, uh, you, you, you will save it also through becoming a Christians and so on. But, but that idea, if you, you want to understand uh, a culture, you have to fully, as much as possible, become part of, uh, of that culture. And so, I'm almost crying. That's why I miss China. That's why I can go <laughs> Oh, I understand. Anymore, my health doesn't allow me. That's it. Yeah. I was once in Shanxi province and uh, in, a, in a village that you, that called Dongargo. And uh, I've been many places, you know. And uh, I went to Jujaha and people say, oh, someone else was already here named John Paul Wiest. <laughs> That's... You know, you were asking me, that could be another example of things that touched me, almost changed my life. My experience in uh, in Duorgo and Liohotsun. You know. Well, can you tell us? Because we have lots of time. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Duorgo, it, it, it was a, a, a very strange experience. Uh, my first link to Duergo was with all history. I was invited by a, a group of young priests and sisters um, to go secretly because at that time I was still, I was still in Hong Kong, I guess, not in China per se, or maybe already in Shanghai. I'm not sure. But to go over there and to give them a training in whole history because they wanted to preserve and that history of what happened in China during and the Cultural Revolution until now. Uh, so I remember taking a place and uh, landing in, in, in Taiwan and, and then I said, was at night because they keep it secret. And I said, am I going to find somebody at the airport? Yes, I found somebody. They put me in a car and uh, we went away. And after a while we said, where are we? It was dark countryside and so on. And then we, we went to, to Duergo. And as I was uh, giving them the story, I, uh, the the old history training, I heard about the story of uh, Duergo, what happened there, and so on. They took me to some of the villages. I saw at the entrance of the tomb all the names with the people that had been killed at that time. I met uh, the, the, the caretaker that also had been taken to concentration camp and so on. And when he came back, uh, his wife had disappeared. 
children, they didn't know what happened to them, and so on. So all those stories were uh, very, 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 very moving. Uh, um, yes, Don Argo has, has been, it's been written about quite a lot lately too, and uh, uh, it, 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 is, uh, it, it is a very special place. Well, there's one question we've asked everyone, and that is, obviously we want to hear mostly about you, and we still have more questions, but the one question we've asked everyone is if they have a memory of someone else, another scholar in our field. Uh, it could be more than one scholar, <laughs> but do you have a memory of someone else that you would like to share with us that should be remembered in, 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 in the history of our field? Okay, uh, let's see. Yes, I have. Several, um, but maybe I sh should. <laughs> As I was about to say, maybe I should put take a, a Western scholar and a Chinese scholar. But um, well, my first one will be a Chinese Western scholar. <laughs> it's Wu Xiaoxin. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, Malatesta, Father Malatesta and I were very, very close. At one time, he, he tried to get me out of Merino to go and work with him in San Francisco. Uh, so he, he got me to, to China several times. And uh, for, for instance, uh, since I'm so interested in talking to people, to go to interview the people of, uh, of that were trained in and became something in China, but in Aurora, Jindan University. So I was coming back from one of that trip, and that was uh, 1989. Uh, that's another story I could tell you about it, in June 1989. I was coming back, and he said, you should stop in San Francisco. I want to present you something, a young scholar. And so we went to a restaurant in Fisherman, whatever, in San Francisco down there. And um, here was Fu Xiaoxin. And that's where we met for the first time and we talked talk a little bit. And then I agreed to help uh, Wu Xiaoxin, whatever. He, I could do, and that's how that's how we became very very good friend. And we find out that uh, as the year went on, that we had the same interest in training in accompanying young scholar. And so, yes, Wu Xiaoxin and I go a long long time. So. You said you had others as well. Uh, yes. And others, you know, uh, I have many daughters in China. <laughs> it's young scholar, you know, also men, but um, among the, the women probably more that, you know, uh, I help. And they grew into beautiful, really very good young scholar. Um, Liu Xian would be one. Uh, Marina Wang would be one. Ho Xinping would be one. But, uh, and then Wang Meixiu. But uh, probably the best, the closest one is Yin, Yin Wenjuan and she's teaching in Beijing. And um, uh, we became very close because she uh, not only accompany her as a young scholar and so on, uh, help her to go to France and do more research over there. Um, But, well, some of the things are very personal. I, I don't think I can go into this kind of uh, detail here. But anyway, um, 
in Guangzhou, when I was in Beijing, um, um, asked me several times to go to talk to some of her students. Um, I uh, encourage her in her teaching. She, you know, she, she's um, a scholar of uh, literature and Western literature. And so she, she took the Bible as an example of literature and used that in a way she, uh, to, uh, uh, to introduce their, her students to uh, Christianity and so on. She, she's not herself a baptized Christian. I tried to put her in touch with some of the priests, but it, it never, Chinese priests, it never really worked out. Uh, but she's the girl that says, well, you know, when I go to school from home to there, he, he talks to me and I talk to him, talking to Jesus and so on. So I, I told her, you are a lot, a lot more a Christian than I am. And so, you know, so we have a very close relationship. Um, a little son calls me Ye Ye and so on. <laughs> it's the same with Liu Xian. Uh, but anyway, I, I, you know, I cannot go in this interview into two personal things, but sure. uh, yeah, you know, some of those young scholars, they are so dear, dear to me. Oh, they are. In fact, what's so impressive about these, these young scholars is I remember, and you might remember this too, uh, Dr. Weiss, that there was a time in China when, when young scholars would say, oh, I just don't feel confident with the languages I need to study Christianity in China. They, some of them wanted to learn French. Some of them wanted to learn English. But don't you think that the, the, the young Chinese scholars now have really uh, just advanced so much. They're so, so impressive. And a lot of those obstacles are no longer there. Oh, yeah. So that's, you know, that brings to almost your last question, you know, the hope for China. My hope for China are in the Chinese scholars. Mm -hmm. You know, some now, now are well-established elderly people like uh, Han Xi, He Guanghu. Tao Fei Ya, yeah. But Tao Fei Ya. But even about, well, I would say the younger, because they are kind of middle-aged now, like Wang Meixiu, uh, Yin Wenchuang, I was mentioning Liu Xian, Yang Huilin, Yang Huilin, not uh, Yang Huilin, is the, the elderly scholar, elderly. And then Yang Huilin is a young right. female student. Um, those are doing very, very, very well. And now, what I am telling them, in fact, is, is their task now to educate, to help the upcoming younger generation. They are the middle now. So you have two group of scholars now, well established. And I think in the West, um, people like you and me and other, Wu we, Xiaoxin, we, we can be proud to have been part of the building of those two groups. But now it's for them to, to keep on, to keep on the work. Yeah. Well, when you think about hopes for the future, and, I, and so many of us agree with what you just said, um, this really, it really is gratifying to see young Chinese scholars working on projects. They really are the future. Um, but what kinds of projects, what do you, what kinds of things do you hope you see people working on? Well, I, I will need time to 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 think about that. <laughs> I I I I don't like to. My my point was never to impose right yeah. a project 
on the students is to see what you see what I've been doing, you see what other people have been doing, and then uh, what are you interested? What would be doing? And then be a kind of advisor, counselor on this kind of thing. Um, now I, I, I cannot remember his name. He's in Xiamen, I guess now, but uh, that that uh, scholar also that you know gave me credit uh, uh, when he saw my dissertation on the Paris Foreign Mission in Guangdong and what I've been trying to do over there uh, in my dissertations. Then he said, "Well, then." I am going to do and go to those places, interview those people, see what Dr. Wiz did, if that's true and so on. And out of that, he, he, he has become an expert in Christianity in Eastern Guangdong and uh, Fujian. Uh, again, so, so this is the kind of thing that, um, I, I think it's important is to be able to encourage those people um, looking at places that uh, need to be more research and so on. And it, it doesn't have to be also necessary Christianity. You know, I'm looking in people like uh, Gansu, Xinjiang over there. Um, well, you have old remains of Christianity, the quote-unquote called Nestorians, which I don't like to call Nestorians, the Church of the East, and so on. Yeah, there's things to be more researched there. Uh, not only uh, the knowledge of Chinese, but knowledge of those local language over there. And maybe look into the Uyghur, what is their religion, and so on, trying to understand better. So, uh, it's again, is is cultural and faith-related things. So, uh, Christianity is part of it, but maybe it's even a bigger right. picture to look into there. Um, so, 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 here I am. I cannot answer you, your question to the point because um, because it's, it's for them to find out. Right. I, I think that is the best possible answer to that question. Well, we have about three or five minutes left and I want to ask one extra question and that is, well, what are you working on? Because I know you well enough to know that Dr. John Paul Wiest is always working on something. <laughs> Can you tell us what you are doing? Uh, no, <laughs> I am not working on anything uh, special. Uh, you know what? What I found part of the reason I left China is was my health, mm. and the other reason. Um, it's almost a confession, but I, I found that I was, I was losing it. I was not as sharp as I needed to be in order to do uh, meaningful research in the field, which is, which, which is my whole life, you know, going there among the people and so on. My health, and not choppy. So now here in the US, I have only one project that I want to finish is that project about the, the, the archive of the Society of, uh, uh, of SAM, Auxiliary of Mission, those priests, sisters that, um, no, no sisters, I'm sorry, those priests uh, that were in China and so on. And, and, and this, is, this is a mine, so interesting, because what they wrote about is, is in a way different from uh, what you find in most of the other missionary archives. 
because they became part of a Chinese vicariate or diocese and so on that was led by Chinese priests and uh, Chinese bishops. So what you see is the life of, of a Chinese-led Christianity. Um, so there was no concern about writing letters to the headquarters and say, you see how good we are and so on, so on, so on. No, it's a very down to earth account of what was going on. And so it's, it's very fulfilling. And then thanks to you, Amanda, Cassie Watts and so on, I think we are making good progress in making those uh, archives available to to the scholars. And hopefully, this is something hopefully that the Chinese Christi uh, scholars will be able to build on and, uh, and so on. I was hoping you would mention that because I know that's a tremendous amount of work that you are still doing on that project. And largely because when I think of you, and I've actually heard people say, John Paul Weist is Xian Dai de Lei Mingyuan. And I know you'll say, Wu Gan Dang. <laughs> but, but I have heard so many people say that because the Samis have this connection to Lei Mingyuan, to Vincent Leb. And so when I think of you, uh, I think of you beginning your interest in, in China and the people in China that we both love so much, thinking about Lei Mingyuan, about Vincent Leb. And so you begin with Vincent Leb, and now kind of as you approach uh, you know, this, this season, you are working again, uh, in a way, walking in the foot the, the, the footprints of, of Vincent Leb. And I think that is a beautiful, a beautiful way to think about your legacy in this field. Wow, I'm very, very touched by what you said. Uh, yeah, you know, Lei Mi Yuan, yeah, it's all, it's all my life. And, and when, when I think more and more, we, we have the same kind of uh, background you know, Lei Mi uh, French speaking, but a mother that was trained in England and, uh, uh, you know, um, being, being in, in, in touch with that other culture in Belgium and so on. I, I, I think that prepared him for uh, the rest of his life. And I see again, coming back to what I said in the beginning, me too, being some kind of bicultural person, um, make me feel that it, it, it's so important not to to judge and so on, but to listen to the to the other side and let the other side speak and so on. Well, Dr. Wiest, we are we are just now out of time, but let me personally thank you for all of your work. Uh, all of the care you've given over the years for this to this field and, uh, and, and in many ways all of us who are younger are like the Chinese building on a foundation that you helped to build so thank you for that and thank you for agreeing to be interviewed it's just a great honor thank you so much well one more thing maybe yeah. uh, someday somebody can help me to put all those stories I have about experience in the field. <laughs> yeah, the Many field. people will be watching this. I think maybe we'll put a list together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay.